O inde lenjela isi hamba yo 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 wa shumandela Kubalandeli wake wati Soti banange freedom day Washu mandela Kubalandeli wake wati Soti banange freedom day Hinde Lengela esi hamba yo Hinde Lengela esi hamba yo very good morning, it's Penny Wild, the Black Pen. I want to read an article for you from businesstech.co.za from the 13th of July, 2016. So it's an old article. The 13th of July, 2016, businesstech.co.za. The title of the article is Shocking Pay Difference Between Black and White Professionals in South Africa. I'm not going to read the whole article. I just want to read the introduction and then um, touch on why I'm reading this article in particular. New data shows a massive difference between the median pay of black and white professionals in South Africa. Let me stop there quickly. So for those of you who maybe studied maths or studied stats, statistics, there's a difference between average and median. Median is the middle point of certain data. Average is when you take all the data and then you divide it by the number of whatever units that you're using. So if it happens that you've got a room with 10 people and those 10 people, nine of them earn a hundred rand per month and one of them earns a million rand a month. Hundred rand for the nine, one million rand for the one. The median, the midpoint, will be a hundred rand. That means the average person in general there is earning a hundred rand per month. The problem with average, when you use average as data, is that if you take the hundred rand per month times the nine people, and then you take the one million rand earned by the one person and you bunch it all together, it's gonna to give you one million and nine hundred rand. And you divide that by 10 people. All of a sudden, the average is over a hundred thousand. So you'd be like, oh, but these guys earn an average of 100,000 rand per month. And I'm like, no, that's the data is actually not correct. A better term, a better way to calculate is to look at the median. So that's very, very important when you guys read data or study data to understand when you say average, are you talking about the median or are you just saying the average where you collected all the data and you divide it? That's fundamentally important because Santon, for example, is called the richest square mile in Africa and has the highest average salary. Sorry, someone's trying to call me. And has the highest average salary on the, on the African continent. That's the average. That means they take all the CEOs and all the bankers and all the people there, and then they put all that together with the cleaners and the security guards and the whatever, and then they divide it. But if we were to look at the median, to show you a completely different picture, because I know people that work in Santa and a lot of them don't earn as well. As we'd like to think my apologies for that diversion new data shows a massive difference between the median pay of black and white professionals in south africa analytico a data and earnings analytical consultancy conducted a comparative earnings analysis of genders across different races to indicate any major discrepancies using the analytico salary analysis model tm its findings were based on 692,704 individuals. I would like to stop there again. Analytico, I don't know who Analytico is. They clearly are consultancy. It's very important when you read some of these articles that when you look at the data, you ask yourself, who collected the data? Who are they? What do they do for a living? Are they even South African or are they from somewhere else? Who funds them? You might find that they funded by certain government institutions or certain private institutions as well. And that's very important to know because sometimes these people have an agenda when they collect data. 
The next important thing when you're reading articles of this nature is to always ask, if you guys are going to be giving us averages and medians and apparently 60% of men are this and 20% of women are this, find out how big the sample size is. In South Africa, we arguably have 60 million people. So you'll read an article saying 30% of men beat their wives. Ooh, 30% of men. Does that mean 30% of the 30 million men we have in South Africa? Or is it 30% of a survey they did? And in that survey, maybe they asked 100 men. And maybe they asked 100 men who are in prison. Or 100 men who are going for therapy. Or 100 men who have had court cases for gender-based violence. So it's fundamentally important that people understand the sample size that was used in data collection. Because it's almost impossible, even with census, which we just had in South Africa recently, it's almost impossible to ask every single person for certain data, number one. And then number two, it's also difficult to ascertain if that person that gave you the data is being accurate. A lot of people in this country are receiving grants, are receiving funding from NSFAS, are receiving BEE deals, are receiving funding in other spaces because they lied on their applications. They said they're under earning, they said they're previously disadvantaged, they said they maybe live with their grandmother, whatever the case may be. So it's also difficult to find out how honest people are. With some of this financial data, luckily they extract some of this data from pay slips, from the bank, from the South African Revenue Services, of which people also like to source our tax collector, but it's as close as possible to accurate. In this case, their sample size was 692,704 individuals. And these are people in the formal employment sector in South Africa. In South Africa, we've got 15 million people that work, that have jobs, and of the 15 million, 10 million of them are in the formal non-agricultural sector. 10 million. So at about, let's say roughly 700,000 people that were interviewed, that equates to about 7% of the people in the sector. It's a huge number of people, but it's about 7% um, of the people that were surveyed, sampled, whatever the case may be. This is very important for us to know, especially when we're going to be looking at data that we're now going to be debating online. Professionals are classified as occupations which requires a high level of professional knowledge, skills, and experience. The data below splits, so this is the formal sector as a whole, which has 10 million people, but it also splits between professionals and just people that work in the formal sector. The research found that white male professionals out-earn their white female counterparts by as much as 42% on the median earnings, while black female professionals out earn their black male counterparts by 17%. I'm going to read that again. White males that are professionals, they out earn white females by 42%. Black females professionals out earn black male professionals by 17% at the median. White males working in the formal sector could expect to earn a median salary of 21,700 Rand per month. White males working in the formal sector could expect to earn a median salary of 21,700 Rand per month. By contrast, black males working in the formal sector could expect to earn a median salary of 3,612 Rand per month. White males in the formal sector, 21,700 Rand per month. Black males in the formal sector, 3,612 Rand per month. White males who are professionals earn a median salary of 30,453 Rand per month. White males who are professionals earn a median salary of 30,453 Rand per month. And black professionals, black male professionals, earn 9,244 Rand per month in the formal sector. White females working in the formal sector earn a median salary of 13,331 Rand per month. Black females working in the formal sector earn 2,887 Rand per month. White female professionals earn 17,700 
Black female professionals earn 11,155. It's very important for you guys to go and read this article so that you can see the numbers. It's very difficult for me to just give you numbers and for you to just take the numbers. Um, it's better to see these graphs, these numbers. You can look at it, you can compare. It's got very nice graphs that um, compare the different categories. So the categories, of course, are white male professionals and then white males. Of the formal sector that was sampled and understanding that people are not that accurate. And understanding that we don't really know who Analytico is and who funds them. <clears throat> One of the things they do in this article is they split it between... Sorry, my I think it's my Wi-Fi that's acting up or it could be Facebook that's hating on me. So it splits between high earning, median and then the lower percentile monthly earnings. Um, very interesting data. At the highest end... At the highest end, white male professionals earn about 60,000 Rand per month. And black male professionals at the higher end earn 23,000. White female professionals at the higher end earn 32,000 Rand per month. Black female professionals at the high end earn 22,000. What was fascinating for me to see in this article was, at the median, black women earn more than black men. That's very important for me in a, in a time and a space where constantly we're being told how men earn more than women. That's the data we always hear. Men earn more than women. Men by far earn more than women. And it seems that when people are speaking about these things, they don't, men they don't mention the intricacies. Part of the intricacies being, I think you're speaking about white men in particular. Because when it comes to black men at the median in the formal sector, black men at the median earn less than black females by 17%. Very importantly as well, is that black men in the formal sector earn less than white females. If you just look at the data here, let me just find it for you. The median black man is earning 3,600 rand per month. Meanwhile, a white female at the median is earning 13,300 rand. That's very, very important. For us to know white men 21,000 white females 13,000 black men 3.6 at the median I I don't like gender wars to be honest um, I have issues with the feminist movement which has got very very good or had very good intentions I think a lot of very very stupid men have been put into leadership positions in politics, in religion, in the business world. And those men, because they set up these boys clubs, have tried to keep as many women out as possible. And even where women fight and, and scream and bleed and sweat to get in, those women don't get treated fairly. And they definitely don't get paid fairly. Because these men make sure that the money goes to them. I'm aware of this. It's, it's there. Even if you look culturally, men are always like, Belinda, Meli, stupid men. Those are stupid men. Intelligent men make sure that capable women, and by capable women, I'm not talking about a woman who is like a man. That's another very big mistake that we make. It can't be that we call a woman a competent leader just because she behaves like a man. She is violent. She is domineering. Uh, she is a bully. She is feared. No. Leadership comes in many different ways. One of them being love. If a woman is incredibly loved, and people serve her and follow her out of love. She must lead. She is capable. She has the merit. And then she must be paid fairly. And by fairly, we're not saying she must be paid equal to a man. We're saying if she is better than men, she must get paid more than men. Unfortunately, sadly, a lot of women don't support each other. And this is a legacy of patriarchy, of course. Women wouldn't want a female queen to run the Zulu kingdom. Sadly, we're not ready for a, a, a female president in this country. We partly saw it with Unkosa Zana Jamini Zuma, even though I think she was a bad candidate. But we've seen it in other spaces in this country. And we've seen that even some of the women that get far in politics, they have to fight and be aggressive, which is unnecessary, very unnecessary. But for me, what is important for this article is to understand specifically for black people, guys, you guys are fighting each other unnecessarily. 
black men and black women should be holding hands and working together. On top of that, we live in a time and a culture where black women are waiting for indoor damast. Who a real man sends e-wallets. He takes care of his woman. He provides. Where when there are no jobs? Where when men are earning 3.6 per month? And obviously you guys look up to celebrities and you look up to all Cyril, Nabo Patrice because they're billionaires. Those are isolated 0.001% of people in this country. Isolated. I think when I looked at the data, I stand to be corrected. It might be 7,000. Might be 7,000. I think there's just over 7,000 people in this country that earn over 500,000 Rand per month. It's just a very small percentage of people. And mind you, the bulk of those people are probably white people and some Asians. Not black men. Very, very few black men are earning that amount of money. Yet a lot of women on social media that have been influenced by your Instagrams, that have been influenced by your influencers and celebrities, to believe that no, men must earn. What kind of a man stays at home? Between the age of 16 to age 35 in this country, you are qu qualified or you are titled, labeled as the youth. And we have 74% youth unemployment, both male and female. 74%. That means out of a group of 100, almost 8 of, I mean, out of a group of 10, almost 8 of those people don't have jobs. And mind you, the youth is the bulk of this country by far. I think under the age of 16, uh, you're looking at about 15% of the population. And I think uh, above the age of 65, which is the pension retirement age, about 9% of the population is there. The bulk of people are the youth in this country. And 8 out of 10, almost 8 out of 10 of the youth don't have jobs. And yet women are on social media, black women in particular, bashing men. And the men obviously have found the Red Pill Nation, these masculine platforms where they fight back. But it's not fighting back. It's trying to defend your, your failures and your father's failures and your grandfather's failures. It's sad. Our fathers, our grandfathers failed, especially as black people. Number one, they failed to retain this land called South Africa. They lost it to white British colonialists who at some point handed over management supervision to the Afrikaners and today that management supervision has been handed over to a handful of ANC elites who some of them or Trevor Manuel are saying they're not part of the ANC anymore or Tito Mboweni are enjoying lots of board money consultancy fees working with international companies a lot of the tenderpreneurs I meet are struggling they have their homes repossessed they have their cars repossessed they're struggling to make ends meet and they they borrowing money from Oma Shonisa. You have to read the stats, the data. It may not be fully accurate, but it's the best we have. It's the best we have in this country. The average black family in this country lives on 1,500 Rand per month. Now I'm talking, I'm not talking about people that have jobs. I told you blacks who have jobs earn 3.6. But that's a small percentage, as I said. It's 25%. A very small percentage. The vast majority are living on grants and other side hustles just to get by. But we're bashing each other for money. And the feminist movement, which is fighting for women's rights, clearly seems to be working for white women who are under the white men in terms of earning capacity. Those white women get to tick the BEE box because they fall under previously disadvantaged. On top of that, they tick the, they tick the box for female because there's this story that females are oppressed in this country. Yet white females are out earning black males by more than three times, more than four times, three, six, nine, twelve, about four times the salaries of, of black men. I hate gender politics, gender wars. I hate race politics and race wars. We should be working together, but these, this is data that's there for you to see, especially for my white friends and white people that are always like, no, but you must hire based on merit. You must hire based on merit. That's very rich. That's very rich and it shows an ignorance or mal malice in you not understanding the history of this country. Yes, we want the country to work. Yes, we want competent black people in politics, in business. But you have to understand that if you're going to be in a space where you want to be treated fairly, but you've got all the odds stacked against you, 
you're a white man and you want to be king of the Zulus, but you're not Zulu. You're not black. Your family was not there. They've got a bad history with the Zulu kingdom, for example. And then you expect to be treated fairly and to be treated based on merit. Unfortunately, the world doesn't work like that. And something has to give. For me, I think the bigger lesson is black females need to begin buying from businesses owned by black females. Black people need to begin buying from businesses owned by black people so that they can pay each other better salaries. In South Africa, Hees Genoot, last I checked, is the highest selling magazine. Black people are 80% of this country. Afrikaans people, white Afrikaans people might be 6% of this country. Yet their magazine, the Hees Genoot, is the highest selling magazine in the country. Afrikaans fiction, books, and exclusive books and all these other bookstores. Afrikaans fiction is the highest selling book form in the country. Because these people are patriotic to their own. They understand that if I buy an Afrikaans newspaper, an Afrikaans magazine, an Afrikaans book, I'm supporting the Afrikaans nation. Something to, to learn from, to aspire to. Black women are going to complain every day and say that we don't have black female representation. Are you supporting the black females in the workspace that you're in? Are you buying from black female businesses? Or are you buying from other people who are, are, are not part of your agenda? And then you wonder why you're not being supported. At some point, people need to look within for the things that they want. These are not things that I want. I want to find panelists who share my views. But for you guys out there who are pro-female or pro-black or pro-whatever it is, are you really doing what you say you, you want to do? Are you in line with your own values? The ANC that you vote for, who is funding them? Who, who are they giving their attenders to? In which neighborhoods are they living in? Are they living in ANC-run neighborhoods? They're not. Are they buying from businesses owned by ANC members? They're not. Yet you guys, the idiots, are voting for them, of course, because you don't understand how these things work. So... I wanted to share that with you. Please read this data. Uh, feel free to comment below. And let's just try and build a, a better South Africa for, for all of us. Hopefully over time, once we've resolved, resolved our, our negative history that excluded a lot of competent, talented people. You know, Sia Kolisi would have never been able to be captain of the Springboks and lift a World Cup as competent as he may have been back then. You know, a Patrice Mutipa, for example, would never have been able to become as wealthy as he became, no matter how intelligent and brilliant he was because of policies that were out there. And it seems the policies haven't changed much. And the black people that have been let in, the Cyrils and the Patrices, who speak great Afrikaans and great English, they've just come in and they've seemed to close the gate behind them because they just wanted to sit at the table with the elite, but not necessarily fundamentally transform this nation so that we can unearth the most talented people in this nation. A lot of black talent is going to leave this country, along with the white talent that we've left, that is, has left. If Elon Musk had decided to stay in South Africa, he would be one of the white people now complaining that the ANC is corrupt, complaining that he's not getting funding for whatever tech business ideas that he has because he's not black. He'd be complaining constantly because that's how it works here. Or he'd be working with the ANC, funding them, so that he gets all the tenders as well. Look, we're going to lose a lot of talented black people until we change something. And the biggest part of the change starts with you. A lot of you that are complaining about foreigners in townships and other spaces. The reason those foreigners are making money, the reason those foreigners are powerful and have guns, is because of you. You can be as xenophobic as you want. You can claim to hate foreigners as much as you want. You can claim that they're stealing your jobs as much as you want. But the bottom line is, ladies, the women that are doing your hair are foreigners. You're the one that's going to them. A lot of you are going to buy from Pakistani, Somalian tuck shops, spaza shops. You claim they're poisoning you and whatever the case may be, but you're the one that's giving them your money. A lot of the restaurants that you guys support are owned by white people, but they have waiters and waitresses from other countries. You're supporting them. At some point, you have to begin interrogating where is my money going? Who is it supporting? Because if you vote with your rent, your rent dictates the society that you live in. If you're constantly buying from businesses owned by white racists, the white racist agenda will stay alive. 
If you're constantly buying from businesses that are owned by toxic men, damn idiotic men, the toxic male patriarchy agenda will remain in society and will oppress you. If you're constantly supporting, um, let's say you're homophobic, and you're constantly supporting a Somizia, La Cizue, who are some of the biggest celebrities and influencers in the country, that's going to be the agenda that's going to be there. And whatever agenda and values that you think you have, they won't work. The Indian Muslims in this country, they make sure that they buy from people that are aligned to their agenda. They send their kids to schools that are in line with their agenda. Same for white Afrikaners. Their patronage is towards white Afrikaans establishments. They support schools and businesses and churches that are in line with their agendas. Sadly, the vast majority of black people that are giving their money to people that really, really don't like them and don't care about their agenda. Hope you guys will have a blessed day. Let's carry on educating and learning from each other. Love you guys very much. Cheers.